uh, take a little look at what happened last night uh, on NXT. It was spring breaking. Spring breaking NXT. They couldn't even do it in a location where somebody could have fallen into a pool. You know, I thought that was the rule. With Spring Bake, that's one thing that Nitro did better than anybody else. That's one thing you've got to hand to WCW. They knew how to do a spectacle at Club Lavella. That's where this should have taken place or something that looked like Club you know, Club Lavella. So somebody could have took a header into the pool. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The only header we have in that building was Braun Breaker falling off that uh, cat bird seat or the, uh, the bird's nest or whatever they call it last week, splattered himself on the ground. And that led to this match with Joe Gacy that we've got coming up in the main event of this show. But it opened up. It opened up with some skit. It uh, it opened up with Pretty Deadly, your NXT, your new NXT Tag Team Champions doing a extra campy skit from poolside, being goofy. They run down what's going to take place on the card and then jump into the pool. They've done this before for shows. Obviously, this is Pretty Deadly's first chance to do it. They come across as guys you want to punch in the face, you know, and who guys that you want to see get slammed uh, because they're such goofballs and they're so over the top and that's a good thing <laughs> when you're bad guys they got into it a little bit with the viking raiders later on as they attempted to keep poking at the creeds but we'll get to that first match of the show it was a good one cameron grimes defeated solo sokoa and carmelo hayes with trick williams to retain the nxt north american championship uh sokoa had uh, had Cameron uh, had Carmelo Hayes up in a uh, Samoan. I think it was going to give him the Samoan drop when Cameron Grimes came off the top rope, hit him with the cave and double foot stomp. I hate that move. I've never liked that move, and I know he can pull it off and he makes it look pretty good. But I just something about that move is visibly that just. I, I don't know what it is. And I know, look, if he's coming off the top rope at me, yes, he could kill me from any position with that. But eh, I don't know. There, there, this happens later on, too, with Braun Breaker's spear. I just, there's got to be a better way. But good good match. You know, Solo Sokoa was, uh, got a loud chance to begin the thing. Carmelo Hayes is a star. He is an absolute star. We did get our, you know, obligatory Holy S chant and the This Is Awesome chant after there was Sokoa. Uh, Grimes uh, hit uh, Sokoa with a Hurricane Rana as Carmelo Hayes was, was, what was it? Grimes used a Hurricane Rana on Sokoa while Grimes also was giving Hayes a superplex. Didn't look all that spectacular, but we did get the, the, the chant for it. And again, the match went on from a couple minutes after that. Long story short, it, uh, it, Hayes, you know, ends up getting, uh, ends up getting knocked out of the picture. Sokoa pinned by Cameron Grimes. NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose was then in a skit where she went to the tanning spa, which I think is the official tanning spa of NXT there, and got into the tanning bed. And then, of course, she sets it for only a couple minutes. She was on the phone with J.C. Jane and Gigi Dolan, and I'll, I'll meet you at the beach. I, I need to, since I'm already, you know, incredibly dark, I need to just jump in the tanning bed for 15 minutes and then jump out of that before I go to the sunny beach. Makes complete sense, I guess. I'm, I'm not a... 20 something year old girl so maybe that's that's how it goes down there in florida when you have natural sun outside and you've already you know got an incredible base stand but that that's besides the point the whole thing was set up for the fact that wendy chu could go in there and somehow crank the timer up without anybody knowing and mandy rose i guess just fell asleep in there because when she got up later on she was burnt indy hartwell and duke hudson they had a moment Indy was looking at her hand. There was no ring there. Then Duke Hudson walks in. They both stand. Duke kind of leans in. Indy says no. And they both go in different directions. And that was that. No Persia. No Dexter. No that they ran off. Maybe they're going to, to add that into the mix later on. We'll have to see. Roderick Strong talked to the Creed brothers and Ivy Nile backstage. Says he's taking over the diamond mine. Says he's all about it. You know, they they need to listen to him. The Creed brothers just kind of rolled their eyes, and that would build towards something a little bit later on. Nathan Frazier against Grayson Waller. 
these guys could be future members of the main WWE roster. I don't think there's any doubt that Grayson Waller will be. There is probably a doubt about Nathan Frazier. Is he big enough? Is he the kind of guy that they like? Even if they brought him up to the main roster, does he have a trajectory with how they treat guys his size who can move like him that's going to be better than Mustafa Ali, that's going to be better than Ricochet, that's going to be better than some of the people that they've had there? I'd like to think so because the former Ben Carter is pretty damn awesome. And I really, really enjoyed this match up until the end. Uh, physically, there's little that Frazier doesn't seem like he can do. He's absolutely incredible young guy. Grayson Waller's just a great bad guy, I think. A, a great heel. Again, punchable face. You know, the whole gimmick, the whole act, you know, charisma. He, he knows exactly who he is and, you know, was, was pretty good. Uh, Frazier went for a Phoenix Splash earlier on in the match, missed it rolled through it but was able to hit it a little bit later on when andre chase and chase you all of his students in the crowd blew an air horn which distracted grayson waller uh he looked like he was going to crotch himself on the ropes walked over to it but then fell hit himself uh throat first on the ropes slung himself back which put him in the position for nathan frazier to come off the top rope and deliver a perfect phoenix splash onto him for the victory then it was time for Fallon Henley. I know that's not Brian's girl to, to emphasize the, uh, the name on, but I'll do it. Fallon Henley. She's a country girl, and even when her parents bought that bar, she made her keep the, uh, the, the, made him keep the horse after they sold the family farm. That's apparently the story here with, with Fallon Henley. She likes to raise hell with Briggs and Jensen, and her family bought a bar at some point, and then they had to sell the family farm. But she had a horse named Luna, and she kept her horse named Luna, and there ain't nothing like riding a horse. That's what she says. Then there was a meeting between Santos Escobar and Tony D'Angelo. Every, you know, mob movie you've ever seen, any ridiculous sit down, you know, parody of a mob movie you've ever seen. That's what this was. They actually have a little bit of detente there and, and everything's kind of cool for a little bit. Uh, they go out. They don't want to get in each other's business, but they want to be in each other's business. And that's where that stood for the time being, as they both had a uh, a, a tense stare down and a in a handshake and that was that for the time being viking raiders backstage they had an interview about the creed brothers that was interrupted by pretty deadly who as i mentioned earlier just kind of poked the bear a little bit on the creed brothers and when they viking raiders bowed up they kind of snuck away so I'm not sure if the viking raiders are going to be sticking around not the worst idea in the world for them to be staying around there and trying to help out those other teams i mean they're not doing anything on the main roster anyway and they don't really fit in any of the mix when you look at the street profits rk bro the usos they look like they've got that thing held down for quite some time Plus, you got Alpha Academy as well, too. So they just don't fit in the mix there. They're much better off being down there and trying to help some of these young teams get a little bit better. Joe Gacy in a promo said we should fear what happens tonight if he does not win the NXT championship. He vowed to change the world. Well, you know what, folks? You got up and the sun came out, so you know how that worked out for him. Nikita Lyons and Cora Jade against Lash Legend and Natalia. Jane pinned Legend after Natty booted Legend in the face. Match was okay. <laughs> It was it was there. It wasn't awful or anything like that. So Lyons did the deal where she did the split into the leg drop. Jade followed it up with a flying senton off the top rope. And then Jade got the pin over Legend. A vignette then with Tatum Paxley talking about her entrance into the breakout tournament. She's a power lifter. She does not have a horse named Luna, but she does have the name of Tatum Paxley, which Brian Alvarez will over-enunciate on every single show from this point forward. J.C. Jane and Gigi Dolan, now that was their turn. They had went to the beach, okay? They went to the beach, and they left Mandy Rose there, all burned up. They talk about sending her some aloe. Eh, she's going to be fine. They park in a, in a tow-away zone where it says no parking, and they brag about how great of a spot it is. And then they go up to the beach. 
and they're sitting there for a minute. And then it's time to get up and take their clothes off and run into the water and frolic about. And the plus 65 NXT male viewership probably was very, very happy about that. It was almost Divas era-esque with them frolicking around out there. All we were missing was, was Trish Stratus pulling up with the ice cream truck and maybe even Brock Lesnar uh, out there F5-ing a shark. Do you remember that one for SummerSlam, I think it was? It was good. But anyway... <laughs> they're at the beach and they're out there frolicking about when Wendy Chu and, and Roxanne Perez, Roxy, then decide to steal their stuff. And Roxy's not sure about this because, you know, she's got some some training to do before the breakthrough tournament. But Wendy Chu, she doesn't have time for any of that stuff. She's in it for the funnies and the lulls. And they start stealing her stuff. They they steal the car. They steal the shoes. They they run down the sand and they throw the shoes out into the street so so Gigi and JC you know that's part of the comedy they have to walk across the hot sand ooh ah, ah ooh ah, ah oh those are my shoes those are our shoes hey wait where's the car and there's no car uh, it wasn't awful but it wasn't good and it wasn't needed <laughs> I, I don't think it was, it was, it looked a lot of this as it sounds, I can't get work myself into a tizzy the way Brian does about some of these shows. I mean, it just, I mean, from what I'm saying to you, would you get that fired up about this show? Odds are you didn't even watch this show. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that the phone lines are open tomorrow for anybody that wants to yell at me about, you know, how awesome this show was and I'm not, you know, giving my, my all and my effort about it. What, what can I tell you? The Creed Brothers defeated the Viking Raiders. I believe everything the Creed Brothers do. I love the Creed Brothers. I hope they don't kill themselves or anybody else in the process. But when they're in there bumping and thumping with guys like the Viking Raiders, guys of their size, I mean, it, it really does mask some of the limitations. And, and obviously there's a lot at this point in their careers, a lot of the limitations with the Creeds. Long story short here, Roderick Strong ran out when the referee was distracted, hit Eric in the face with a knee, ran up on the apron as Eric was dra uh, draped over the ropes. He was out of there sliding Ishii Lariat by Julius, and the victory was gotten for the Creed brothers, who then were upset with Roderick Strong for jumping into their match. Kaylee Ray debuts next week as part of the breakout tournament. Briggs and Jensen are, are, are okay, apparently, with the medical staff. They, they worked a, a joke about masturbation in there. And uh, Brooks, in about six weeks, is going to be okay again. And then the main event, Braun Breaker defeated Joe Gacy to retain the NXT championship. I like Joe Gacy not in this character. I think there's a way you can tweak it and make him an effective member of the roster, although we'll have to see what happens. I wonder what his future is going to be, but it looks like there may be one because after the match, after he stood tall, there were two shadowy figures dressed in black behind Braun Breaker as the show ended. Rusty, Rusty Rose, 10, 4, 86. <laughs> dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh... It's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her and Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harlan. Way back then, they had cha chain barricades. <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl uh, Rick Flair and some more guys. And... <laughs> So that was that. I'm just too good. Who, who did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.